mentioned our greatest argument. Um, and, and I'm going to read this little quote here you have on 169. Our greatest argument against tyranny, the answer to the critics of liberal democracy, is to point to the monumental achievements of liberal democracy in improving the quality of life and preserving equality under the law for all of its citizens. You, you also mentioned a few pages before that the love of neighbor. And if we're to show a quality of life and a love of neighbor, how do we speak to the love of neighbor when the neighbor is doing something that could, as you mentioned, female circumcision something that could could actually harm people how do we do that how do we go about loving our neighbor to prevent something that they have that freedom in some respect to do we campaign through um proper channels and uh, to get a law passed or changed um to make it clear that there are certain ways of behaving which are intrinsically dehumanizing which are intrinsically destructive which are dangerous and uh, which are reducing the humanness of human beings. And that that has to be pretty near the heart of it. Um, and uh, if the campaign is not working, then uh, the early Christians would say, we have to live in such a way that the wider society will come to see that the way we're living is the better way to be. I mean, it took the church 300 years before um, the, the the Roman Empire cottoned on um, so many people becoming Christians because they could see that the way these Christians were living was vastly preferable to the way that the, the, the pagan world had ordered itself. But that took time and it took a lot of martyrdom and, and uh, a lot of prayer and a lot of uh, anger and threats and so on. Um, maybe we'll have to go through that again. You know, we've the Enlightenment has bought us time by uh, embracing an Enlightenment-shaped version of Christianity. The Western world uh, doesn't need to be persecuted because who's going to persecute us for believing that one day we'll go to heaven when we die, as long as we just keep ourselves quiet at the moment. Um, but if we were actually to start saying um, we're going to campaign for the rehumanization of our neighborhood, our town, our country, whatever. This might quite soon lead some people in authority to say, we're going to, we're going to ban that. We're going to rule that out. And, and then who knows how soon we could get to that point. Um, I, I forget who it was. I think it was a, a Roman Catholic Archbishop of Chicago, was it, who said, uh, somebody was quoting this to me the other day, who said to his subordinates, I will probably die at peace in my bed. Um, some of you may well die in a police cell. Some of your successors may well die in front of a firing squad. Um, now, that's perhaps a bit overdramatic, but it could happen. It wouldn't be the first time that there's been a big change. And particularly if we give up liberal democracy for all its for all its dangers and, and faults, if we give up liberal democracy and go for some sort of state tyranny instead, then who knows how quickly we would get to that point.